Oh, hey, how you doing? Dr. Polly here, MGT4520 International Entrepreneurship. I'm glad you came along. Today, we're talking about how to develop a global business plan. The objectives for today are to know the internal and external purposes of a global business plan, to identify all the parts of the business plan and the direction for each department or organizational function of the company, and lastly, to create a global business plan from the outline and sample provided, which are very important considering your second challenge is largely based on this operation. Now, before we jump too far into what is a business plan, how does the business plan work, how is it laid out, first, we should really do an opportunity assessment plan. And what we're really looking at here is the idea and the market. Now, building on this a little bit further, we have four components. The first component of which being description of the idea and its competition. This leads us to the second step, which is the assessment of the domestic and international market for the idea. So in the first two, is the idea good? Does it fit? Because remember, a lot of good ideas are out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will fit with the marketplace, which leads us to the third step, which is the assessment of the entrepreneur and their team. And the fourth step, determine the steps needed to make the idea the basis for a viable business venture. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of good ideas out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it would make a successful business. So to look at this, we're going to look at ideas and competition. And in these four topic areas, the first being the product or service needs to be described in as much detail as possible. And in this case, in many cases, if you have a prototype or a schematic of the product, this can be very helpful, not only to show people or show prospective financial investors, right? But it can also help not only you and your team actually understand the features that you are trying to offer. The second component is all competitive products or services and companies in the market must, 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 must be identified and listed. Remember, as we've discussed before, we're trying to make the best decisions we can given the information that we can find. But it is important to try and find as many, if not all, of the companies and competitors in the marketplace. And this will help you understand just what the marketplace looks like. Now, I will tell you from my own experience, I, in my video production company, I totally underestimated the market because I only did secondary research on the phone book, believe it or not, back in the day when we actually had phone books. But I only looked in the phone book. I didn't think to look on Google. I didn't think to look on, you know, talk to other entrepreneurs. Say, Are there other video production companies in these areas? So it is critically important to know as many, if not all, of the companies and competitors operating in that market. The third component is compare your product or service with your top three competitors. Now, compared to the foreign competition, is your product or service unique enough to enter the market? And I put unique enough in bold because it doesn't have to be perfect. Is it unique enough? Is it special enough? Does it have enough to enter the market? Or are you selling the exact same thing that is already existing in that marketplace, which would, again, present its own issues? It would be very challenging then to enter that market if you're just selling what everybody else already is. So is it unique enough? Which leads us to the fourth component, Competitive products and services or services can be found through the country's GDP counting system. This is a method, this is a way of looking in the country's actual databases to find the competitive products or services that are existing already in that country. It can also give you a little bit of insight as to the companies operating in that industry. For example, if we're in North America, we can tap into the NAICS coding system 
to show all of the registered businesses in that industry or sub industry. So this brings us to the market and the actual opportunity and the size and the characteristics of the market are very important. Is it a big market? Is it a small market? Is it a saturated market? Is a fragmented market? All of these components that we've learned in earlier business courses, especially as it pertains to startup, are directly applicable to whether or not we enter a global market with our opportunity, with our product, with our service. Now, when we're looking at the market data, you should go back at least three years. And the reason for this is it validates if the trends are for the entire industry. Is this a fad? Is this something that's happening quite short? Or is this going to be long term? A great example of that would have been COVID-19. So now we're looking at projections three years ago when COVID first started. Now, is that an accurate reflection of how the marketplace is now? Given the devastation of what COVID has done, to the global marketplace, the domestic marketplace, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So we have to put, you know, our thinking caps on here. We really have to be critical and look at maybe a little bit more longer term data five, six years ago compared to the COVID data to now the existing data. What is happening now? Gather as much published secondary data as you can, especially if it's free, right? You're trying to gather as much information as you can in order to make the best decisions that you can. For example, if we were looking at, as I put here, motorized children's wheelchair, like a sports car, if that's what we're going to you know, try and sell, if that's what we're trying to you know, bring into the marketplace, you know, children's wheelchairs, make it look like a race car, make it you know, kind of sound or operate or behave kind of like a race car or sports car, just to make it interesting, to make it flashy, right? To know and understand whether or not this will fit in that marketplace, we really need to gauge what's already existing in that marketplace. We need to get market statistics on the healthcare industry, the overall industry, right? What wheelchairs are already existing out there? Is there already a children's wheelchair that is similar to this sports car theme? What motorized wheelchairs exist within that market segment, right? How many children actually need wheelchairs? So not, not, not just motorized wheelchairs, not just wheelchairs that, you know, have some sort of special component to it or special look to it, such as a sports car, but how many children are actually needing wheelchairs? And a bigger part of this is, again, not all wheelchairs are made the same. Not Obviously, not all children are the same sizes. So are there different offerings within that target market, within that market segment, within that overall market? And what you're trying to do within this process is really synthesize and, and break down the information into compartments to best understand just how many customers do you actually have? So as the entrepreneur, as the business owner of this micro or small sized venture that you're taking on, you really need to assess yourself. You need to do a little, you know, internal reflection. You need to do a little bit of, you know, looking at what it is that you want, what it is that you want for the company, what is good for the company, but you also need to assess your team. Is your team capable? Are they willing? Do they want this? Right. So just as much as it is you want it, do you have the people in place to help build that bridge, to help take you into that new global market? Now, one person on the team must have industry experience in the area of the new idea. So if you're looking to take a new product or service and expand into a global market, at least one individual must have industry experience in that area. You can't go absolutely blind highly correlated with the probability of success. So the more people are at least one, but the more people that you have that are in tune, that are that are in line with what it is that you're trying to sell, whether it be a product or service, if they have an understanding of that, it makes it that much easier to break into that new global industry. 
some of the questions that you really need to answer as a micro or small business owner that's looking to take your business internationally is, why does this idea and opportunity excite you? It is already very, very difficult to start and run a business domestically. Now that you want to take it internationally, why? What is driving this ambition? What is driving this internal spirit? Does it make sense? Will this idea and opportunity sustain you once the initial excitement was worn off? Right? Is it a flash in the pan? Is it something that's distracting you from the overall issues of your company? How does the idea and opportunity fit your personal background and experience? Just as much as does it align with your team, does it also align with you? What is your competence when it comes to this new product or service you're trying to take internationally? Lastly, how does it fit the personal background experience and skills of the entrepreneurial team? So we've looked at ourselves, we've looked deep down inside, we said, you know what, is this the thing that I want to do? And the answer is yes. Okay, we want to rock and roll. We think we can do it. We looked at our team. Team looks good. I've got one or two people that are definitely competent in these areas. They actually know a little bit about the marketplace that we want to enter into. So that's good. So we're good. Team's good. Now what? So the next steps you need to consider, what's the time and money? cost what's it going to cost you to get this off the ground right the thing to remember and i put it down here most entrepreneurs most business people underestimate the value they underestimate the time and cost necessary to expand into a global market it is very different than starting a business domestically. Domestically, you typically know the language, you know the laws, you know the political systems, you know the cultures, you know all these different things. But when you're moving into a global market, even if you already speak the same language, language say we're looking at Canada and the United Kingdom, although we're, I mean, Canada being in the Commonwealth, the laws that we have, the economic systems that we have, although similar to the United Kingdom, are different so entrepreneurs often underestimate naively that it's not going to take as much time and effort and money when in reality it still will so that's one of the things that that i really want you to be cognizant about especially when you're looking at you know your second and and especially your first challenge you know don't discount the time money energy effort it takes to expand a company globally into a new market, especially if the market you don't speak the language, right? Table 6.1, I put here questions for the development of an opportunity assessment plan. And this is very valuable. This is what we're looking at. So we haven't even looked at the business plan yet. This is simply whether or not it's a good opportunity. This is gauging whether or not we should take the time, money, energy, effort to do a robust business plan. So you're probably thinking now, this is a lot of work just to do the opportunity assessment plan, and we haven't even got to the business plan yet. And yeah, you're right. It takes time, energy, and effort. And remember, you're already operating a business domestically. So you're already flat out usually with your time. You know, you're dealing with this, dealing with that, expanding here, et cetera, right? So it is a time intensive process, but the purpose now, so the reason that we do the opportunity assessment plan is to see, you know, should we even consider this? Now we've gotten thus far, we're here, right? We've arrived, we're here. Got our best clothes on, we're ready to go, rock and roll, all right. This is the purpose of a global business plan. You're trying to reduce the inefficiencies and the ineffectiveness of global expansion. We're trying to do, if you think in another way, you know, lean. You're trying to do everything 
on as uh, as little financial cost to you and time cost to you as possible as as a, as allotted as allowed because remember it still is a time intensive process it still is a financial investment but we're trying to stretch that money and, and again that's a term we're trying to make that money last now it also describes all the internal and external elements in going global it integrates the functional plans such as finance marketing organizational plans to provide a roadmap for the future so again the business plan the operational assessment very much is showing us short term is going to work the business plan will show us not only the short term goals that we need to accomplish but what do we need to do into the future right where is this ship going to take us and and i'll be honest with you you can plan as much as you want plans change and and successful entrepreneurs are adaptable they can cope they can change but it's good to have that understanding and recognition of what might or might not happen the fourth part here is you read by a variety of stakeholders you need to be comprehensive enough to address the issues and concerns of advisors bankers consultants customers employees investors and venture capitalists and last but not least you provide decision making guidance viability in the global markets and a vehicle to obtain finance in your textbook starting on page 97 is the global business plan outline and again this section is critically important to the second challenge of this course the your second assessment and table 6.2 outlines an international business plan and i've also put examples on the module page of what a business plan typically looks like now the example on the module page is over 100 pages and i do not want you to write that much i mean that's way too much but we've done a modified plan and so it's incredibly important for you to know and understand the different sections within the business plan because you are going to be asked to replicate this information you are going to be asked to do a lot of research find a lot of references and then justify your position on whichever challenge that you choose within the second challenge within the second assessment but you are going to have to validate your opinions your ideas with references and what that will do was at will add credibility and substance to the decisions and the assertions you're trying to make last but not least table 6.5 in your textbook outlines what should you do and probably things that you should avoid when it comes to writing a global business plan at the end of the day it's very important that it's clear concise has a purpose and is in depth wow another session in the books global business plans and opportunity recognition two very important topics to consider especially when it comes to your second assessment so do pay close attention rewind if you have to and i will see you next week